to speak this afternoon on testosterone therapy in relation to diabetes and cardiovascular disease. What we do know from uh, a study done by Cornyn et al. Uh, in the 1990s that half of healthy men between the ages of 50 to 70 will have a blood testosterone level below the lowest level seen in healthy men who are actually 20 to 40 years of age. When we look at the stats for cardiovascular disease in Australia, these are the latest figures that I could obtain. We know that it affects more than 3.5 million people. That approximates 30% of all deaths in 2004. It is the most expensive health condition as a percentage of our health system expenditure. When we look at uh, prevalence of diabetes and, and insulin uh, glucose, impaired glucose tolerance in Australia, we know that diabetes itself has a prevalence of a, of a, of a proportion of 8%, while 17.4% of men have impaired glucose tolerance. So Australia has a rapidly rising prevalence of diabetes and other categories of abnormal glucose intolerance. Uh, Mark's already gone through some of the symptoms of uh, andro andropause, uh, you know, we're all familiar with the sexual ones such as diminished libido and erectile dysfunction, uh, difficulty achieving orgasm, uh, intensity, uh, diminished intensity of experience of orgasm and diminished sexual penile sensation. But of course the more kind of uh, generalised presentations for uh, patients presenting with andropause are things like r diminished sense of vitality or d diminished muscle mass or depressed mood, impaired cognition, uh, diminished bone density and anemia. So we really have to have an acute sense of uh, awareness clinically when our patients present, uh, you know, in the, in the onset of multifaceted disease. Uh, what we do know about cardiovascular disease and uh, testosterone, we know that uh, there is an unfavorable biochemical cardiovascular disease risk in men uh, with low testosterone, resulting in uh, low HDL cholesterol, high LDL cholesterol, high triglycerides, high fibrinogen, and high plasmin, uh, plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 levels. And this is all associated with low rather than normal levels of testosterone. We also know that there's a central role for PA1 levels linked to increased blood clotting and decreased fibrinolysis. We also know that uh, PA1 levels are affected by insulin, obesity, fat cells, leptin, and adiponectin. So when it comes to atherosclerosis, our pathology, our understanding is that, there is an, that it's an inflammatory disease. There's a central mediator for inflammation via COX-2. We know that cytokines are released, which increase the level of C-reactive protein, which we now know is a, a, a predictor of atherosclerosis. And we know that both COX-2 expression and cytokines are inhibited by testosterone. And this was a large study done by Clintz et al., a cardiologist, some years ago. We also know that research uh, shows link between low testosterone and insulin resistance, uh, therefore metabolic syndrome and diabetes itself. We know that approximately between 20 to 64 percent of men with diabetes have actually got low testosterone, and older men are particularly susceptible. What we also know from various studies, numerous studies, that the lower the free testosterone, the more likely the coronary artery disease. We also know that uh, studies show that testosterone improves exercise-induced ST depression. We know that when injected into coronary arteries, it causes dilatation. And it has positive effects on uh, lipids, mostly. Uh, some studies have been variable, but the last majority of studies have been positive with regards to TRT. And low testosterone is definitively associated with dyslipidemia. And most of that applies to males, of course, where in females it has uh, otherwise benefits. So we have a study done in Circulation 2000 uh, which showed that exercise-induced myocardial ischemia was reduced uh, with the presence or introduction of testosterone. We know that there's significant improvements in pain perception and role limitation from physical problems. Uh, in that particular study, there was no change in lipids or coagulation or hemoglobin changes, and they used a 5 milligram patch, which uh, resulted in doubling of the androgen levels. Uh, we know that in another study, 
uh, when anti-anginal treatment uh, was withdrawn, uh, a placebo double-blind double blind control study was initiated giving intravenous testosterone, a dose of 2.5 milligrams, and Bruce protocol stress tests were ap applied. And what was observed that there was an increased time to ST depression on the ECG, resulting in less chest pain. We also know from a, a rather pivotal study by Rosano et al., again from Circulation 1999, where short-term administration of testosterone induced a beneficial effect on exercise-induced myocardial ischemia in men with coronary artery disease. And again, it was thought that this effect might be related to the direct coronary relaxing effect. Another study done by Webb et al., showed that intracoronary injection of testosterone at physiological concentrations in men with established coronary artery disease resulted in coronary arterial dilatation, also increased coronary blood flow. So we have other studies done by Elizabeth Hack et al., uh, published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism in 2002, showing an independent inverse association between levels of testosterone and aortic atherosclerosis in men. So what we know is that inflammation plays a central pathogenic role in the initiation and progression of coronary atheroma and its clinical consequences. We know that cytokines are the mediators of cellular inflammation and promote local inflammation in the arterial wall, which may result in vascular smooth muscle apoptosis, degradation of the fibrin cap, and plaque rupture. This was a large study done by Macon et al. We know further that platelet adhesion and thrombus formation then occur, resulting clinically in unstable angina or myocardial infarction. We know that cytokines are pathogenic, contributing directly to the disease process. And an anti-inflammatory effect of normal physiological levels of sex hormones may therefore be important in atheroprotection. Another study done by Puetel, another cardiologist, uh, looking at acute hemodynamic effects of testosterone in men, it, published in the European Heart Journal of 2003, showed that the, with testosterone there was an increased cardiac output, there was a benefit in patients with congestive cardiac failure, resulting in decreased left ventricular afterload, and there were no adverse effects observed. In terms of inflammation, the pivotal uh, pathogenesis involved in this, we know that tumor necrosis factor alpha uh, activates vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, VCAM1. We know that testosterone actually reduces VCAM1 expression and thus inhibits atherog uh, atherogenesis. Again, a rather pivotal study done by Hatakayama in 2002. Study done by Chenner et al. in the Heart Journal of 2003 showed that a relatively low blood concentration of testosterone in older men may have adverse effects on atherosclerosis and explains the higher incidence of coronary heart disease in males. We know that testosterone vasodilates, improves exercise tolerance, and improves angina threshold. And I guess it's a bit tedious re reminding you of some of these uh, pivotal studies, but it, it just needs to be uh, listed because we are, you know, basing our information on a hardcore science. And we need to have these articles, uh, you know, documented. Uh, it's there for your digestion so you can go back over those articles to verify and validify what we're doing.